Bhagavad Gita is described in the Padma Puran very similar to Bhagavatam. In the Padma Puran, the Bhagavatam is described that the two cantos of Srimad Bhagavatam, the first two cantos represent the lotus feet of Krishna. And then systematically going ahead, the tenth canto represents the smiling moon-like face of Sri Krishna. Aruna bimba phalat dharoshthat. So just like the 12th cantos of Srimad Bhagavatam represent the form of Krishna, similarly, the 18 chapters of Gita represent the universal form of Krishna, Vishwarup. Same Padma Puran describes. First five chapters of Gita are the five heads of this Vishwarup. The next 10 chapters are the 10 hands of this Vishwarup. So 5 plus 10, 15. 5 heads, 10 hands. 16th chapter is the navel of Padma Nabha Shri Krishna. And 17 and 18 are the two lotus feet of Krishna. So any chapter we pick from Bhagavad Gita, we are actually associating with the form of Shri Krishna. There is no doubt. This is a Shastrik Praman. Bhagavad Gita Kinjida Dhita Ganga Jalalava Kanika Pita Sakrideva Murari Samarcha Kriyate Tasyana Yame Nacharcha so beautiful. Bhagavad Gita Kinjita Dhita. If someone meditates, now the word Kinjit is very beautifully used in Sanskrit. Hmm? Bhagavad Gita Kinjita Dhita. So beautiful. Now the word Kinjit can go with Bhagavad Gita first half or it can go with second half, Dhita. Hmm? So these are like the eye of the crow. In Sanskrit, it's described that this is a crow. Looks like a deer, but just let's assume this is a crow. I like to keep my hands out, fingers out. So let's think this is a crow. So when you see, you never see both sockets of the crow's eye. The crow is either seeing like this or it's seeing like this. So according to Sanskrit, it's described that there are two sockets, but only one eyeball. And that one eyeball is moving from one socket to another. So there's one eyeball, but two sockets. It's a poetic expression. Hmm? It's called Kaka Kshinya. The eye of a kaka. So similarly here, kinjita can go with first half or the second half. There is one kinjit, but it can go with either of the sockets of the eye. What does kinjit Bhagavad Gita mean? Little Bhagavad Gita. But kinjita dhita means little meditation. So if someone meditates little on the Gita or meditates little portion of the Gita, spends little time meditating or spends lot of time meditating on little words of the Gita. Is this clear? Little portion of the Gita or little time. Bhagavad Gita Kinjida Dhita Thode Samay Ke Liye Sai If someone meditates on Gita even for some time and Ganga Jala Lava Kani Ka Pita and sips one one drop from the waters of the Ganga. Ganga jala lava kanika pita. Reading little Gita, sipping little Ganga water and Sakrid eva murari samarcha and worships Sri Krishna once. For someone who reads Gita, worships Krishna and drinks Ganga jala, what is the benediction? Kriyate tasya na yamena charcha. Such a person will never have any charcha or discussion or even meeting with Yamaraj. So that Bhagavad Gita is blessed in our lives by Srila Prabhupada. This human form is so difficult to get. Durlabho manavo deho dehinam kshana bhangura. 11 to 29 Bhagavad. This human form of life is very very rare. It can be lost like this. But in that to get Gita is very rare. Now, this Bhagavad Gita is interesting. Can someone tell me what is your favorite chapter in the Bhagavad Gita? Anyone? Chapter? Nine. Ten. Ten. Eleven. Two. Second. Second. Fifteen and twelve. Oh, very nice choice. Yes, Prabhupada, at the back. Twelve. Yes, Prabhupada. Twelve and fifteen. You know what is my favorite chapter in the Gita? One. 
नहीं माई फेवरेट चैप्टर इन द गीता इज द फर्स्ट चैप्टर ना एज बियर्ड एज आई लुक माई चॉइस आर ऑल्सो इक्वली बियर्ड वाई मोस्ट ऑफ यू आर लुकिंग लाइक दिस जी फर्स्ट चैप्टर यू मीन सेकेंड चैप्टर नो आई मीन फर्स्ट चैप्टर most of them neglect the first chapter as if the gita starts from the second chapter so then why do we have the first chapter people say prabhu ji first chapter doesn't even have shri bhagavan uvacha bhagavad gita starts from second chapter why are you picking first chapter it is the most underrated chapter very honestly speaking why why is it important in my perspective chapter 2 to chapter 18 gives the solution but chapter 1 talks about the problem statement we are all interested in the solution but what if we don't know what the problem is in the first chapter we find arjuna standing on his chariot trying to see the other party sena yor ubhay or madhye ratham sthapayame achuta like we tell our driver gaadi nikal main aa raha hu Arjuna is almost authoritatively saying, "Sthapaya" in Sanskrit means, "Chalo, establish my chariot there." Very instructive. Please take my chariot there. Why? I want to see my opposition party. This is our situation in life. We want Krishna to help us to do what I want to do. We don't want to do what Krishna wants us to do. we want krishna to help us in the plans that we have already made mujhe ye banana hai ye karna hai i'm going to do this i'm going to do that krishna you just give me blessings that ye ho jaye we don't go to krishna krishna what do you think i should do in my life no i know what i have to do you simply give tathastu you be the driver i will drive i will drive it is my chariot you simply name sake be ahead vada mala 108 coconuts as if krishna doesn't have vada mala krishna doesn't have coconuts we are giving him coconuts krishna i'm doing this so that job lag jaye thoda ye ho jaye acche number se pass ho jaye so we have we have decided what i want to do but we just want krishna's tathastu and then what happens arjuna looks at his problem then realizes wait a minute i cannot solve this interestingly krishna is quiet why because arjuna thinks what the problem is he knows what the problem is and arjuna also thinks he can solve it on his own so why should krishna speak this is the sole reason our paramatma is silent in our heart at the moment krishna is there as paramatma ईश्वर सर्वूता हृदयार्जुन ठति सर्व से चाहम हृदय सन्निविष्ट फिफ्टीन फिफ्टीन गीता चैप्टर फिफ्टीन टेक्स्ट फिफ्टीन कृष्ण सिंह आई एम सीटेड इन द हार्ट एंड वाई ही इज नॉट स्पीकिंग सेम एज फर्स्ट चैप्टर वाई बिकॉज वी आर कन्विंस्ड बिकॉज ऑफ आवर ईगो एंड आवर प्राइड दैट आई नो वॉट आई हैव टू डू इन लाइफ यू यू सिंपली ड्राइव यू गिव मी द मनी आई नो वॉट टू डू krishna is quiet then when we realize hey govinda what has happened so many uh, enemies i don't know what to do karpanya dosho pahata swabhavat prichami tvam dharma samuna cheta yachreyasya nishchitam bruhitan me shishyaste ham shadimam tvam prapannam 27 gita when we go to krishna like that that's when shri bhagavan watch Krishna speaks when we go to him with three intentions one Krishna i am nothing i want you to be partha sarathi which means i want to move in this chariot but i want you to move in the direction in the intensity that you want to move aap hi kijiye bhagwan mujhse nahi hoga second when we go to krishna with the intention that i need your help I don't even know what my problem is how can I know what the solution is and third we are sincere helpless and humble not cheating sometimes we do lip service through the lips we say 
Krishna, I am yours. But in the heart, I belong to my plans. So this is also a lesson for mentorship, for leaders. Don't give an advice unless you are asked. Because if you give your advice to someone who is not asking for your advice, even if you give it, they will not take it. But only when they really need it and they ask you and you give it, will they follow because now they are ready. So if someone is filled, his stomach is full and you give chappan bhog, they will not take it because there is no hunger. But if they are hungry, you give them even khichdi without salt, they will eat with relish. So Arjuna initially he had full stomach, he knew what to do, so Krishna didn't give him anything. But when Arjuna went completely with the spot empty, Krishna, I don't know what to do, you help me. That's why Krishna gave not khichdi but chappan bhog in the form of Gita. So this is why I like the first chapter because I can relate to it. Ahead all the 18 chapters is very difficult for me. Krishna talks about uh, Pandita Samadarshan. I don't have Samadrishti, so it's very difficult for me to relate that in my life. It's theoretical. But this I can understand. And interestingly, where did Krishna speak the Gita? He spoke it on a battlefield. Now when we are having this class, there's announcement. Please put your phones on silent. Please don't talk. Kids, please go to your you know, kids class. Why? So that there is no disturbance. Am I right? Now you tell me, if Krishna has to speak Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna, he could have done it in a temple at Radha Giridhari Mandir. He could have done it in a cave. He did it on a battlefield. Why? Because our life is anyway a battlefield. There are horses and chariots and noise and conch and sword fight going on throughout the day. And amidst that, we have to hear the Gita so that we win over this battle. If Krishna speaks this in a cave, we can give an excuse. Eh? Krishna spoke in a cave. My life is not a cave. My life is a battlefield. Krishna said, no problem. I'll speak it on a battlefield. He spoke on a battlefield which is so noisy. Everybody is talking. Then you cannot, our Shaligram Krishna Prabhu cannot announce. Okay, please put off all your um, horses down and all your elephants down. Please put all your weapons down. No more fighting. No. Conchals are blowing all through. And in amidst that Krishna is speaking to tell us in the battlefield of our daily life, we have to hear Gita. To win that battle. Sometimes people say, I'll come to the temple and I'll become a bhakta when all my problems are gone. But you see, all the situations where Gita and Bhagavatam were heard were at the time when there was calamity. Parikshit Maharaj had death in seven days and he's sitting and hearing Bhagavatam. Is our problem as intense as Parikshit Maharaj? Arjuna is on the battlefield of Kurukshetra and he's hearing Gita to win over that battle. Not just the battle, but the battle of life. So our problems are insignificant and therefore we have to hear the Bhagavad Gita and the Bhagavatam to cross over the problems. Not that the problems will end and then we hear. Problems will never end. It is like standing on the shore of an ocean. Somebody is putting a towel and saying, I'll go inside. Another four hours he's still wearing his towel and saying, I'm going inside. The friend is saying, Are you? 8 o'clock I saw you, it's 12.30, you're still standing. No, no, I'm waiting for the waves and the tides to subside, then I'll go inside. The friend says, I'll tell you something very interesting. The waves and the tides will never subside and you will never bathe. If you want to bathe, jump in. Clean yourself and come out. So the waves and the tides in the ocean of this material existence in the form of problems will keep coming. Samsara dukha jalado patitasya kama krodadi nakrama karai kavali kritasya durvasana nigaditasya nirashrayasya chaitanya chandra mamadehi pada valambam Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati chaitanya chandra mamadehi Life is filled with problems. So therefore, don't wait for the problems to get over, to get to bhakti, get to bhakti so that the problems get over. Sometimes people also ask this question. You guys, this Hare Krishna people always talk about Bhagavad Gita. Will my problems finish? Get done? Will my circumstances change? Everything around me change? I lost my father by reading Gita. Will I get him back? People ask such questions. 
So we ask a very simple question in return. Mumbai curves, right? So we have a simple question. When it rains heavily, can you stop the rain? Can you stop the rain? You cannot stop the rain, but then you can pull up an umbrella, which you get on the signal, really big ones, that we were seeing even now while coming to the temple one, a really big umbrella. When you pull up a big umbrella, what happens? You don't stop the rain, but you stop the rain from touching you. We cannot stop the rainfall, but we can protect ourselves from that rain. Meaning, problems from the clouds of Kali, the rain-like problems will continue forever. We cannot stop. We cannot stop that. But how we can stop? We cannot stop those problems, but we can pull up the umbrella of Bhagavad Gita, not to stop the problems, but to stop getting wet and affected by those problems. By taking the message of Bhagavad Gita, our consciousness will change, our vision will change. Circumstance around may or may not change, but our consciousness will change. Our vision, our perspective towards that problem will change. Instead of saying, can I get my father back? You will be convinced that Jatasya hi dhruvam mrityu, dhruvam janma mrityasya cha. Death is certain for one who is born and just like him, ahani ahani bhutani, even I have to go. Let me prepare for it. So this first chapter of Gita, in my opinion, is the most important one. Because it states the problem statement that we can relate to in life. And in that, which is the most underrated verse? <laughs> now you've all started guessing. 1-1 one, one is the most underrated verse of the Gita. Why? Forget about Krishna, forget about Arjuna. This is spoken by Dhritarashtra. And we don't have anything to do with our Kauravans. I have heard people say, Hey, he is a blind man speaking. Somebody who is blind, if he says right law, you will not believe him. People give excuses like this. So he said, he is speaking. Don't take it seriously. But the point is very simple. If it is part of the 700 verses of Gita and Srila Prabhupada has written extensive translation and purport onto it, it is worth our reading.